Hi and welcome back to Star Conflict Tutorials. In this episode we're going to be reviewing yet another ship roll. This time it's going to be the Engineering Frigate. Well, let's figure them out. Starting with basics, engineer is a heart of any team. As long as this heart is beating, the team lives on. Naturally, you as an engineer have two main goals – to survive and help the others do the same by fixing their ships. First, let's talk about how to fix your teammates, which is pretty easy. All engineers have a range of must-have skills that you would do well to use right. The first one is the Nano Drone Cloud. It passively regenerates the hulls of all allies around you and it does it much faster once the skill is activated. If some stricken ally is coming towards you, he's probably in it for the cloud. The Jericho's pilots will be your main customers since they are the least likely to use a repair kit and a damaged hull can be easily wrecked against some space rock. Up next is the Mass Shield Generator, which works precisely like the Nanodrone Cloud, but regenerates the shields of all your allies. This is the second most important skill. Of course, the shield will regenerate itself given time, but this skill can do it so much faster. The effectiveness of your cloud and generator is tied directly to your energy reserves. The more energy you have, the better you will be able to fix and restore your allies. So, when building your engineer, always keep in mind that you will need plenty of energy. The auras alone just won't cut it. Just try imagining repairing an Imperial frigate. It will take forever. You can expand your toolset with autonomous stations. A deployed station will quickly rejuvenate even the most damaged teammate. It can repair only one ship at a time, but it does so swiftly. Autonomous repair station is your best bet, since the shield can be regenerated decently via your aura, while your skill set has only so many slots to go around. You can also fix your allies quickly with your guns, the Eclipse Launcher to be precise. If fired at friendlies, it will regenerate their hulls instead of dealing damage. It will be hard to hit an allied interceptor or a fighter, mind you. Therefore, open fire when quicker teammates fly past some immobile obstacle. The splash effect will take care of the rest. The Eclipse Launcher is the most universal tool for an engineer. Take it without a second glance. You'll love it, I promise. Just remember to craft some super cool charges. You will also do well to increase the effective range with the Horizon or a corresponding implant. Then you will be able to fire from a safe distance most of the time. Yet another skill of an engineer is called Energy Emitter. It boosts the energy regeneration of all nearby friendlies, meaning they can use their abilities more often while you can build the power required to dish out approved auras. Among the other modules is the Warp Gate. This module deploys a portal which the allies can use to jump 5 kilometers forward. How you can use it, you ask? Well, you can warp towards the beacon you want to capture much faster or you can use it to escape jeopardy. Do not ignore the combat drones either. They might be called combat drones, but they can repair as well as they can fight. The skill can regenerate your shields at a decent pace. Once activated, one of the drones will self-destruct, but in turn will regenerate a sizable portion of shields of all friendlies around it. Here's a little hint. If you're under fire, sacrifice a drone if you have to, since it won't do much good otherwise and will simply perish for nothing. Okay. Now we know how to fix and regenerate. Now it is time to understand how to survive since dead engineers are actually pretty bad at repairing. First things first, here's a couple of tactical tips for you. There should always be friendlies between you and your enemies. The engineer is always a priority target, so don't make it easy on the foe, huh? Secondly, you don't need to see your allies in order to enable auras or fire your eclipse launcher. Keep a close eye on the distance so that your modules can cover as many teammates at once as possible. The skills have a special indicator telling you how many targets are within the range of each one. Try and stay near some cover at all times. You can use it to protect yourself from enemies' long-range fire, while if a smaller enemy gets up close, it will have a harder time maneuvering around the cover. Now let's talk the Shipbuilding 101. The Imperials and Federates use the same tools to fix and repair, but they build their ships in totally different ways. The Empire is best focused on reinforcing the hulls of its ships. If you have a shield slot, use it for a compact generator to have more energy. You should also take at least three galvanized armors. The swiftness is the least of your concern on the ship anyway, since the best tactic for an Imperial engineer is to send behind cover and near allies. Use the Auras and strafe out of cover occasionally to fire a couple of salvos. Then it's back behind cover time. A Federation's engineer is a whole different story. You see, it's simply too fragile to do the same. 
so you will have to use your adaptive shields and speed to survive. At the same time, these traits will allow your ship to be where you want it to be and do it fast, that not all fighters will be able to keep up with you. This is especially handy in some of the more dynamic game modes, such as the Detonation and Domination, where engagements are spread across the entire map. Just don't enter a battle you can't win and learn when to escape to fight another day. Let's assume you want to support your allies with something other than healing. In this case, you can install a heavy blaster with an arc reflector. Your damage will impress even some of the gunship fighters, while your drones can handle close quarters combat for you. But always remember, you're an engineer first and foremost. Only join a fight in which your team already has an advantage. If the balance of power is unclear, you better stay nearby and provide auras, quickly retreating if the battle does not go your way. Here's a small trick you can use with any faction's engineer. Use the Jericho 7th implant. This is a very useful thing, especially when you are in need of extra energy. Is your capacitor running out of juice? Expose yourself to some enemy fire and it's full in a flash. To sum this up, here's the near-perfect selection of modules for any engineer. Autonomous repair station, nanodrone cloud and mass shield generator. If you want to play for the Empire, then go for the energy emitter. Should you play for Federation, just add non-composite coating. This is it for this episode. See you in space.